Hallelujah. Well, uh, hallelujah. Mm. Jesus Christ is Lord. All right, so today uh, we've been talking about the all of purpose, but we're not going to talk about that today because the Lord said we was going to talk about something else today. <laughs> so uh, even though I had, I think, another week on that, but it's got to be obedient, all right? So uh, we're going to revisit something that we had started, but then when we did the conference, I only did like one week of it. We're going to talk today about humiliation's elevation. Humiliation's elevation. Don't nobody run out the, the building yet. It's, it's going to be okay. We'll be all right. We talk about humiliation's elevation. Let's go to James chapter 4. Let's start with James chapter 4. Y'all y'all create such a great atmosphere. Y'all make it easy to do this. Y'all do. Y'all y'all great. It's good to have good hearts. Good vessels for the Lord. Uh, James chapter 4 verse 6. It says, but God, but he giveth more grace. Huh? Yeah, I was just going to But he giveth more grace but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. It says, submit yourselves therefore uh, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw it unto God, he will draw it unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. He give grace unto the humble. He says he gives grace unto the humble. Let's go to 1 Peter. So. Uh, Next book over here, 1 Peter chapter 5. And we'll start here with verse 5. 1 Peter 5, 5. This is, uh, this is interesting because not too many people do this, but it says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. It says, yea, all you be subject one to another. So we all going to have to submit to somebody. I know that's kind of hard for some of us, but it says, it says, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. So we're wearing humility. For God resisteth the proud and gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt, uh-oh, elevate. He will exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the mighty hand of God. Another version says, uh, humble yourselves in the of God, and he'll exalt you in due time. So it's not, so I can present myself away in front of you, but God's looking at my heart. So on the outside, I may look humble. You know, I may look docile, which that doesn't, we'll find out here in a second, that's not really humility. <laughs> um, but God is looking at our hearts. It says, humble yourself in the sight of God, and he'll exalt you in due time. So if humility facilitates exhortation or elevation, what would pride do? <laughs> Think about what would pride do? The scripture says God resisted the proud. He re now, it's one thing if God don't show up. That, that's, we, we have trouble with that, right? But imagine God resisting you. It says he resisted the proud. Now, now, you know, again, sometimes it's hard for us to put our, our wrap our mind around how God processes things because God is Almighty. But how do you feel when you're around prideful people? When you sense an arrogancy, do you love following that person? <laughs> I just love them leading me. I mean, how do you, I mean, you know, the person on the job that's you know they're arrogant. How do you, how do you roll with that? The leader. You're just excited, aren't you? No, it's something in you that resists that person. It's something in you that even though you're supposed to be following their instructions, is a part of you that's rebelling in there somewhere because you're like, are you crazy? Ain't nobody trying to do what you tell me to do. It's your arrogant self. <laughs> you don't even know what you're doing around here, right? There's something in you that feels that way. But the Bible says God resists the proud. Now, God has more weight to resist the proud because God is like, there's no competency of you. Everything in you came from me. So how do you even wear pride around me? I'm the guy that did it. <laughs> right? He says he was just, but, but so we're going to learn about humiliation's elevation today, right? So, so. This is the thing. Hum humility, situations of, of, of humility are coming to you all the time. 
like the scripture talks a lot about obedience. You know, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Why? Because if you're obedient, to be obedient, you have to walk in a level of humility. You'll elevate to a place where you'll attract all the good of the land. So it's real simple. So what God does is he puts you in a lot of situations where you can learn obedience. But we, a lot of times we're avoiding that. See, we want to be in control. So anytime God puts us in a situation where we have to be obedient, like even the word obedient to some of us, like that's like a bad word, it's like a curse word. Obedience. Like as soon as you hear it, you're like, yeah, please, ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do. The first thing that come out your mouth. Not knowing that God is trying to get something to you. He's trying to get some elevation to you. So he needs you to invite opportunities for humility. See, see, the scripture says this, and uh, let's go to, uh, this is the spiritual authority scripture, but I'll give it to you. It's uh, Matthew 8, I believe. Let's go to Matthew 8. It said Matthew 8. Let's start here with uh, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into uh, Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. So, so, so with a passion to come to him, saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of palsy, grievously torment. Now, the background is Jesus is going through the town healing folk. He, so, so this guy, maybe not a Jew, is like, I believe what he's doing. So my servant, he came on behalf of his servant. My servant is grievously torment because you help him. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. So I'm going to come to your house. The centurion answered and said, Lord, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not worthy that thou should have come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be, be healed. So now he's breaking down why he believes that that'll be so. He says, for I'm a man under authority. So I'm submitting to authority. He says, having soldiers under me, under my authority. He says, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them, that follow, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So he likened the man's understanding to how he operated in authority and submission to great faith. Because what was the guy saying? Oh, you could just speak the word. The reason why you can speak the word is the authority that comes out your mouth, everything around will obey because you submit to the authority of God. Jesus had went through the town. I'm not here for myself to do my own thing. I'm here for the will of the Father. Nothing I do is of me. It's all for the Father. Nothing I say is from me. It's all from the Father. So Jesus was submitted to authority. So he had authority. He humbled himself. The scripture said, let's go to Philippians 2. I'm, I'm Y'all created a good atmosphere because these are not in my notes, but we're going to talk about it. Let's go to Philippians 2. Philippians 2, we'll start here with verse uh, 5. Uh, I know I'm going a little fast, but... No, yeah. Philippians 2, verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, this is the mind that Jesus had that the centurion recognized and got a revelation of. It says, Who being born... Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. It says, but made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion as a man, look, he humbled himself and became obedient. There's that word again, obedient, unto death. Even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So look, look, look. So he grabbed this revelation of obedience and said, I'm going to I'm going to eat this as my diet, my recommended daily allowance, obedience. And I'm going to eat it to a point where there's none of me left. That's why I'm a, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat it to a point where there's none of, me, none of me left where I'm pretty much crucifying myself. So y'all thought he got crucified on the cross. He crucified with he, he was crucified within his heart. So by the time he got to the cross, it was just a done deal already. See, he couldn't even get to the cross if he wasn't crucified within. Amen. Now, he'd be like, y'all got me twisted. Cross? <laughs> Legion, angels, come on down here. No, 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 no. He was already crucified. He crucified himself to even come in this earth realm. The scripture says he became poor that we might become rich. Poor means to be without. All his glory, all his splendor, all his power, all his authority. 
He left that sitting on the right hand of the Father and came here on this earth realm. That was a crucifixion by itself. Then he started to live the crucified life, having the power to, to affect change and have restrained retaliation. Remember the sufferings. If you suffer like the suffering of the Lord, sufferings of restrained retaliation. I could save myself, but I'm going to give my life. No, 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 ho, ho. I can save myself, but I'm going to give my life. See, so he was obedient. See, that, see all this rap, look, it's, he made himself of no reputation. See, so when you're trying to save face, you're trying to look good. When you're worrying about, well, how come he, they, they're promoted? Well, how come they get to do it? See, that's about your rep. It's about you. See, so now you, are you going to die? Are you going to die to yourself? Are you going to be broken? We, we were uh, sitting around last week and just uh, meditating on brokenness. Somehow it came up. And so, so a lot of times we'd be talking about the word. So my wife is talking. I'll be grabbing my little notes and writing down little different stuff that I get. So I got some revelation. And I think I hid that one from you. Like, normally I tell her, but I was like, nah, nah, you, you ain't getting No, you was teaching that Sunday, right? I was like, nah, you ain't getting this because you're going to teach it. So, so, so uh, but, but what the Lord was showing me, brokenness is, uh, is our cross. See, that's the, that's the nails and the thorns going up on the cross. The brokenness, embracing what's going to break you. So embracing that humility when you could have saved face or when you have the credentials, but you're sitting back going through the process of, of learning as if you don't. Not always. Oh, I already know how to do that already. But just learning anyway. I, 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 I was uh, had a man of God that would uh, call me up uh, from another uh, state uh, when I was in high. He just called me up. And he was annoying. I mean, so one time he called me up. He was talking to me. And the power guy hit the car. I had to pull over. <laughs> like I thought I was going to get in an accident. You know, so I, you know, talked to him. But the, but the interesting thing about this guy, he was anointed. He was powerful. So I had, if I wasn't humble, I wouldn't have gotten none of the anointing. Because the way he approached me was as, as if I didn't know nothing. Now, turn your Bible to such and such. And he'd be going over scriptures. And I'd be like, I'd be sitting there. I'd just be all patient. But I was like, on the inside, I know that scripture already. Like, you didn't even ask me if I knew it. But I'll be sitting there going, okay, so what other scripture? I just keep going through all the scriptures with him. See, I was extracting the power, even though I was being, I, it was humbling, like, because it was like basic, like stuff, like stuff I knew back, I mean, when I first started out. But, but he was walking through it like, so, uh, see, when you read this scripture, what that means is, so I was like, okay, I was just, I just whatever. I was just, yeah. I, now one time I was like, come on, bro. Everybody know that. <laughs> this is Bible 101. You learn this in Sunday school. <laughs> you know? But no, I didn't do that. Because I, I, I wanted to get some, I wanted to humble myself to get something. It's not always about, about your credentials. Amen. Right? Okay. But anyway, let's, 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 let's keep going here. because I that's, So humility must have your heart's invitation. It must have your heart's invitation. See, so you're going to be presented with opportunities for humility. You got to invite them. Not try to get around them. Not try to save face. You got to embrace them. Because, look, look, because if you, if you absorb it, if you let it engraft, if you take it into your heart, then you're in position for elevation, right? Because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, right? He exalts them that are humble, right? All right, so we, so we have to let it get an invitation. Uh, humility, guess what? only has one audience. God. One, see, humble yourself in the sight of God, and he'll exalt you in due time. So it only has one audience, God. So no one can see you have defended yourself. You could have defended yourself. They don't know you could have defended yourself. They, they don't know you could have saved face. They don't even know you use restraint. But God does. The sufferings of this present time are worthy to be compared to the glory shall be revealed to you. So God knows that you have restrained retaliation. God's looking at your heart. Like, like, Jesus knew he can call down legions of angels, but they didn't. Jesus told his disciples that. <laughs> he was telling, man, guys, you know, don't you know I could have called down legions of angels if I wanted to? Jesus could have done a lot of things that they didn't know he could do.